Yeah. A little loud there, buddy. A little loud. Welcome to the Big Honker Podcast, brought to you by Double T British Kennels. I'm Jeff Stanfield with the world famous Andy Shaver. Get the dogs in line. Get them. Uh, you know, it's off season, so it's time to get if, your dog if trained. If you were not happy with how your dog performed last year, send them to Corey. They can or fix the fuck up, or maybe you can just puppy. get you uh, start from scratch. I wouldn't mind getting a new puppy. There you go. Well, I know somebody to call. Yeah, your mom would kill me. Whew. We took forever to get Ollie trained. We yeah, need another one. What in the it world sure, is going? Sure look like it over there, doesn't it? Yeah, he's loving life right now. It's all sprawled out in the recliner, watching life go by. He's trained. He's trained me to mm. think that that's all he can accomplish in life. What is going on in the world today? We have got NFL news. We have got world news. But first, I want to talk about Tucker Carlson. Tucker, Evidently, they've uh, put a gag order on him. He did not release everything. No, 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 no. He said last night that he was going to do just interviews. I think tonight he's going to release more shit. What's funny know. is, is when you see these politicians whining about him showing this stuff, you know something's wrong. Yeah, Mitch I mean, McConnell's like, this is not done right. Yeah, bullshit, Mitch McConnell, you turtle-headed son of a bitch. That's the problem we have is the people in Kentucky have reelected your ass. We need a fresh start in Washington, both sides of the aisle. But why would you want to cover it up if you ain't got some shit to cover up? Yeah. I mean, those people didn't even see the videos, all the stuff going on. The cops invited them into the place. It's bullshit. And everybody knows it. We know about the election. We know about the J6 shit. We know about the 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 COVID bullshit. Everybody knows. And the and good thing is, is nothing's going to happen. That's a good thing? That's the good thing. Nothing's going to happen. Everybody's all worked up for nothing. Well, I think that we're going to start seeing a change in our politics. I do believe that. I don't think nobody's going to be in trouble for nothing they've done from Nancy Pelosi on. I think Dr. Fauci is fucked. Nah. Yeah, I think he is because he doesn't have a political party or a base. He's screwed. I don't think he so. is going to be the scapegoat for the whole thing. You watch the whole thing. He they're going to end up turning on him. And now you've got politicians in big cities now coming out. I saw where the Washington D.C. police. Uh, I don't think it's captain. It's the chief of police. I don't know what his name or title exactly is. And he someone asked him said, "Well, why are we seeing a big increase in murders?" He goes, "Well, what do you expect?" You're letting violent people out of jail all the time. Keep them locked up. He's right. I mean, and then in New York City, their mayor come out and talked about God. We took God out of school. You know, why do we have gun problems in school? Because we took God out of school. It's a Democrat. They don't want to hear that from him. Yeah. But it's true. You feel like shit, huh? No. You're kind of quiet over there. Nothing's going to change. I mean, there's not a fucking thing in this world that's going to change. Nothing. Nothing. You can have all the evidence in front of every American, and they don't give a shit. Nobody gives a shit. I think Americans give a shit, uh, but the media doesn't do their job. It's done. If the media would do their job, we would not have these problems right now. That's our problem. That's over. What's over? It's over. Just it's not. Nothing's going to happen. Nothing. Nothing. Biden's going to still be president. Uh, well, I don't in, think they're going to take him out of being president. No, no, no. I'm just saying, like nothing's going to ha- nothing's going to change. Fauci's going to escape by. Uh, nobody's going to give a shit about January 6. Those people are going to sit in prison and they're going to stay locked up for the rest of their lives. It's over. That's I, it's that's over. bullshit. I hope done. you're wrong. I hope you're wrong. It's done. I pray that you're wrong. Too many people are in on the gag. Yeah, all the wealthy just exactly, people. It's just exactly what uh, that George Carlin bit. He said, it's all a big fucking club, and you're not a part of it. He's it's right. If Republicans can get on CPAC, and they can scream, and they can yell, but if you want change at the end of the day, you have to get the people out that are making these rules. And unfortunately, the people that make most of these rules have a lifetime appointment. Once you're in that little circle, you're set for the rest of your life. The only people that have They're lifetime not appointments vote. are Supreme Court. Nobody yeah, else but does. <clears throat> once you get in there, the odds of you losing are very, very small. That I would agree with you on. I mean, you're, you're talking, you've got to have 
cocaine and hookers, and even then you can still probably How's win Mitt Romney re- get reelected? He's the least thing that's a Republican there is. Once you get in, your 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 cake is buttered, or or I, whatever the fuck it is. Your bread is buttered for the rest of your life. You're not going to lose reelection ever. So the people that can make all these changes are the ones that have lifetime jobs, and they're not going to vote themselves to not have a lifetime job. The 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 benefits are too good. So one side, depending on who's in power, is going to get up and they're going to scream and they're going to say everything that their base wants. They've been waiting to hear for for fifteen years. We've been waiting to hear about re, uh, term limits, and we've been uh, waiting to hear you know Fauci's going to get. We're going to put Fauci behind bars, but when it push comes to shove and it comes time to it comes nut cutting time nothing, nothing's going to happen because it would upset the apple cart too much I these disagree. people these people are worried about their lives and their livelihood more than they give a shit about their constituents i disagree on fauci i think he is going to be the scapegoat for it because covid has played its course and there's too much fake shit going on and too many people know it and it's getting more and more and you're starting to see the left starting to crumble more and more the left is losing their hollywood influence right now in a lot of places and that's i, I think we're going to see some changes i'm not expecting a huge amount i don't expect biden's ever going to walk out of office until after he doesn't get reelected next time they're going to try to find a scapegoat for him too but i think fauci goes to prison before this is all said and done or kills himself did you see that the hillary Cl- the clinton lady yesterday no flying in a private jet one of their attorneys she died from uh uh, turbulence in the sky broken neck only person right. on the plane hurt <laughs> it's the same shit i'm telling you again. i mean but I, we're too fucking we're too fucking complacent to to really go up and demand change what is she like our number 277 our forefathers would have fucking flipped this thing over about 50 years ago i probably longer earlier past that even you think? I think it's been going on for a- i think we i think america sucked for a very long time like we didn't really start getting our footing every i don't think there was a whole lot of greatness in the 1800s in america i think it was still a lot of feast and famine for most people i think it was the 50s and 60s that america really saw this upward swing in world domination i think back in the i think anything before world war one every country was just fucking clinging on to the edge of the earth um no nah, that's not really true the United States Europe? done a lot of things in the late 1800s. I mean, we purchased Russia. We done a lot of things, and we 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 dom we showed our dominance then in the 1800s, late 1800s. Really? Yes, but I think most people still lived on like a dollar a day. And no, 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 no. I no, mean, no. nobody had in there nationwide was nationwide no wealth was small. Yes, nationwide wealth was small. Worldwide wealth was very small. But that's what I'm saying. Like, I think I think people were in such. I think most people were in such desperation back in the 1800s that if the government got a little out of whack, they'd be like, fuck it. I'm we're restarting this bitch because it wasn't, they weren't comfortable enough to say, yeah, they're crooked as fuck, but look what I got. Yeah. They've bought us. I mean, we're so, I mean, we just got back from fake vacation. How bad right. is life for us? Right. But we complain and bitch about a lot of things because it could be better. But most people, yeah, but we're not, we're not willing to do what it would take to make things a lot better. You are right on on the fact of yes. What's it soft? Um, what's that old saying? Uh, what? No. Oh, uh, hard times hard make times, hard, yeah. strong hard men, and good times make soft men. Yep. Um, the hard times make hard men. Hard men make easy times. Easy times make weak men. Yeah, there's a lot. Of truth. Weak men make hard times. Uh, We're seeing the shift. And the, I think the our world really and maybe changed. Maybe we won't. Maybe they'll continue to print more money and you know continue to push this uh, this interest rate bubble and just kick the can down the kick the can down the alley for another hundred years. Maybe they'll do that. I don't know. Um, the 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 big change in our country took place after World War II. They come out as with the G, like they, they come out with the GI Bill. No, I'm talking about people's the way people. Oh, 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 oh. They come out with the GI Bill. Guys came back. They had enough money. Cars were starting to be a, a regular, um, normal thing. People could buy their own houses. Uh, there was a lot of California grew. Big cities grew. There was a big bust or a big boom and and what things were going on in the world. And I think that was the best time in America when it came to opportunity. Um, I would agree. And uh, That's when you started seeing the monopolies pop up. You started seeing like... Monopolies today, McDonald's and, you know, the Walmarts of the world. And a lot of these places took this big step towards corporatization. You know, I can remember before there was really Walmarts. I'm sure. Um, I can remember it was like uh, you were either Kmart or Walmart. 
Like which which Mart or and then Target was? That? I don't even remember Target being a big player. Um, back Tar- when Kmart was around, were they? The Target, you know, but I feel like Target and Kmart are the same store. You know what the second biggest retailer in the box industry is right now today? Not Blockbuster. No. Second biggest. Hold on. Walmart's one. Guess what okay. number two is? Ross's. Dollar General. I can see that they're fucking popping up everywhere. Fuck yeah, they're everywhere. they got they got they're, they're going to be the first store on Mars. I'm 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 convinced when Elon Musk sends the first people to Mars, there's already going to be a Dollar General the, waiting for these people with fucking uh, with the aisles are full of shit. Yeah, aisles are just full of shit. It's not organized. You know, they just got a new shipment in. They can't find anybody to work it. And there's going to be a Dollar General waiting th- for the I, first people to step off that space station. They're number two. Target's number three. Is what I read I can see not that. long ago. But. Target was more, I remember my mom went to Target, and then looking back now, that's a woman's store. She's a single mom for a little bit, and then she was my, my stepdad, We got she, she got married, so I had that. But that was my mom's place to go, right. just like it is your mom. Your mom loves Target. Well, you can get a lot of shit kind of not very expensive. It's not junk either. Yeah, it's not junk, so you don't, you, you know, yeah, it's not Walmart where you're like, I'm just pissing this away. I'm going to wear this twice, and it's going to fall apart. You're getting a nice, uh, nice-ish quality product that, Looks good and it doesn't break the bank, so I can see how Target appeals to these middle aged women. And if you're a single well, straight man, well, look nice. That's where you should go to. Yeah, go get your toothpaste in Target because there's a chance you can meet a good looking woman there. Because the eye candy in a Walmart, I mean, in a Target is a whole lot better than a Walmart is. Oh yeah, big I mean, time. there's not even a comparison of the type. I don't even think like you can judge the Target audience based on if there's those little those little uh, hand mobile or uh, fat ass mobiles out in front. I don't think Target has a lot of fat ass mobiles. Walmart does. I don't even know if they have any. See there? That just tells you. They're not getting a whole lot of lard asses walking through the door, but Walmart's getting plenty of them. The number one target in, in a Texas for eye candy is the one that's in Allen, Texas. Well, I bet. I'm telling you right now, fake boobs everywhere. But now you don't even see Kmart anymore. No, t- Kmart's out of business, I think. About like Sears. Oh, Sears. Look at Sears. They were the number one house. number one store in the world from the 1800s on. You could get everything there. By house. Yeah, everything. Fuck yeah, everything. Get everything. It'll send you everything down to the pin, to down to the nails. My dad said he used to wipe his ass with the Sears catalog every day. That was what the outhouse was. Really? Yep. You used it for a year when the new one came in, but the old one went out to the shitter. And now, you know, we don't even have magazines anymore, so nobody even looks. But I don't know. But back to your earlier argument, I don't think anything's major is going to happen. Fou- Fouch I hope you're in right. trouble. Fouch- I really hope that you're right, but well, I'm not going to get my hopes up. This, I had my hopes up. This too many newest times. thing with Fauci get an independent study to do a story on why we needed the COVID vaccine to find out he paid some people to write it. Right. And then he tried to use it as it was an independent study. Well, and I was just reading a piece a of shit. tweet on the way out here, which is not good. Um, <clears throat> Our phone's working now. Yeah. Uh, Fauci knew over a month before shutdowns of the lab leak in Wuhan, instead of letting the public know of the origins, he went on TV, insisted in closing on businesses, schools, and everything. Oh, this is from um, Marjorie Taylor Greene. So of oh, course I, she's 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 one sided. But I like that lady. Yeah. Um, I did see where. Like did her. you know Ben went to school with her daughter? No, I did not. Yes, know Ben that. went to high school with her daughter. Really? Um, she's probably also in finance. Uh, her the, her investments are really hitting though. Uh, God dang it! Uh, Fauci also I read today that Moderna, one of them companies, they had the COVID vaccine in two thousand and nineteen. Yeah, you know that's crazy. They made a hundred thousand of them already. Put yeah. some people in fucking jail. But I'm going to tell you how you can stop this shit. If you as an American want to change shit, and that probably shut us down for saying this, but it's the honest to God truth, go to your local media, ABC, NBC, CBS, and Fox, and say, listen, until you start telling what the shit is, I'm not fucking advertising with you no more. Then, that's for the people that own businesses that shop with them. Then, if you are if you buy stuff, don't buy from anybody local that advertises on those mainstream medias. That's the way it's going to change is when America shuts down them people because that's what it's all about and if you don't think if it's about tv clicks and likes and uh, watches you're wrong that's what it's all about nfl today uh xfl terrible st- deals they're trying to figure out what they're going to do with it i can tell you what you did take it off the fucking air no the rock said xfl's going way up mm, it's not what i read a minute ago no he said uh i'll pull it up it's on his instagram well, it's on his Instagram because he owns a place. Oh, I'm maybe, just telling just... you what ESPN came out a minute ago and <clears> said <throat> that the numbers are going to have to figure out some things to do because their numbers are way in the toilet. Now, have they? Have you watched an XFL game? No. They've got like a three-yard line or something like that? Or a three-point line, I'm sorry. Have you watched it? No, I have not. Reese do, was telling me Would you consider it. us football fans? 
Yeah. Okay, and we ain't watching. That's what I'm saying. Nobody wants to watch football in March, April, and May. There it is. ESPN adjusts XFL schedule as viewership remains low. There you go. So, see, The Rock can tell you what he wants to. Uh, while ratings still low, ABC shuffle XFL 3.0 games to bigger uh, platforms. Um, but, yeah, he just I just saw it today. But that's just came out. There's no there's nobody's watching it. I'm telling you right now, if I was Saturday <clears throat> night. They said I'm, it did beat the Combine. They said, well, okay. The Underwear Olympics for football. But if it's on Saturday night and I'm flumming through the TV and I don't have nothing to watch and that's on or – Life Below Zero. I'm probably watching Life Below Zero right. or something like Alaska show over that shit. I'll watch the sprint cars run, but that's it. I just do not. And I like football, but it's just, it's it's minor league football. But I'm not watching baseball either. No. And, I, and people are raising hell. I guess the baseball's got some new deal. I, and I don't understand that. Yeah, what you're I doing, guess it's a clock. Yeah. What you're doing is you're making people that don't like baseball like me that aren't going to watch it anyways try to make it more easy for me but then you're pissing off the people that still enjoy baseball right i guess with, with the with the new like. with the new uh clock um i just saw it i guess it was like a, a spring league or something like that and uh <clears throat> a pitcher basically pitched an entire inning before a guy last year threw out one pitch three outs bam 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 well, and like the other guy, he got on the mound and he kind of fucked with the ball and then he adjusted his hat and then the batter called a timeout and then they start the whole fucking thing over again and then the guy uh, does a pickoff at second and like by this time the guy in, in this year's league is already like, you're, I think your thing's about to fuck up. Mm -hmm. I keep hearing something. I don't know if your cable is loose or what. Um, but... And then, and then in this year's thing, like he's already just he's just fucking pumping them out. But I think that there's a batter's clock also. Yeah, you could if like you don't, if you're not ready as a batter, it, it's just a strike. I don't I don't care about watching baseball. We've got a baseball game. I've got some friends of mine that have excellent seats. They offer them to us all the time. Hey, you want? I'm going to get you to take the boys. You and Jesse take the boys. That got great seats. But I just do not care about watching a baseball a pro baseball game. It just does not excite me. Um, I could go and sit there, and I'm sitting there looking at my clock the whole time, thinking, "Shit, you're watch. Right. Let's hurry up and get this shit over with." I, I am just taking not the boys to the Texas Tech baseball game, um, St. Patty's Day. We're looking. I'm looking forward to that. I've never been to a Tech baseball game. I think they're a top twenty team this year. So they're always good. Yeah, they're we're we are a spring sports team. Um, not basketball because y'all are uh, yeah, got we, woke we got, and we, fire got rid, we got rid of that guy. Do you agree on that? I haven't seen enough of it. He prayed or something, and um, he, he was are talking. You that too? I heard that that one time. Yeah, he he. This is what I got out of it. It pisses me off if it's true. He gave a lecture and he talked about the Bible and he quoted Bible verse and he quoted about slaves and masters and something. And somebody's like, "You got to know your audience." It's the Bible, you know. Right. The Bible was written thousands of years ago. It's the Bible. He gave a scripture and quote of the Bible. Maybe Junior shouldn't be such a pussy and shouldn't be so woke and get his butt hurt over someone talking about slavery because we did have slaves. We did. You know, it, that's history and that's life and he was talking about it and I think they made a big I think they made a big big deal out of something and I but here's the deal. I think if they were 30 and 5, it wouldn't have happened. Right. But he was struggling in his second year and I think they want to get rid of him. Uh, in total, what is going on? It's I heard that too. Years. I hadn't touched um, In total, week three games, uh, week three, they averaged just a smear. We'll call it 600,000. Uh, week two, the XFL averaged 675. They lost 10%. And then in week one, they were over a million. Yes. 1.3. So they, they have lost. Right now, they're running less than half of what they were now. It's, it's just there's nothing there. I mean... There's no stories. You've got guys that are, I don't even know how, how you'd say it. The guys that are there are guys that are that are trying to make it to the NFL, some of them. It's not ever going to happen for most of them. But there's no storylines. There's no Johnny Manziels or there's no, you know what I'm saying? They need bad guys that's exciting to watch. Week over week, our XFL show, our XFL is showing some nice growth, little wins and step by step. We're building for the long haul and play opportunity. Attendance at stadium is growing nicely too. Okay, you want to know something be exciting? But I don't, I don't know where, where, like, where is he getting this information? Have or is he listened? just being a? Is he play? Is he WWE in me right now? Like telling me one thing? 
Have you seen um, Biden's press secretary talking about how, how we've <laughs> shut down the fentanyl on the border? I guess, but like, they this, just is, lie. this is easy information to garner. Like, I went to, there were three news articles that said something totally opposite to what he's trying to tell me. You think maybe he did not uh, expect him to come out with this today? Maybe not. I don't know. But yeah, they're, 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 they're in XFL trouble. XFL continues viewership momentum, outdraws, but that's where he got you. Outdraws NFL Combine, NHL, and uh, Major League Soccer. So I guess if your guess win is over soccer, then you got big problems. I guess that's all he's talking about right there. Not that they're, but he did say right here, week over week, XFL is showing some nice growth. I don't know. D- name one player on a team. Uh, the one guy. Uh, quarterback for Alabama. Oh, uh, the AJ, AJ McCarron. McCarron because of the good, the feel good story. Right. Other than that, name one. So I mean, it's tough. Mm. It's hard. It is. Um, I did not realize that Deion Sanders benched his son in the championship game a couple years ago. Well, good for Deion. I think Deion's came in late for a meeting. Good for him. He said uh, all my meetings. He said if I if I start a meeting at seven, I expect butts to be in seats at six forty five. Because I'm starting about 653, 655. And if you're not there, you don't play. Good for him. He said, my son came in, 655. Everybody was in their seat except for him. I said, get out. That's that. Good for you're, him. You're not playing in the game. Maybe we need more Deion Sanders. I never thought I'd have said that. And that mother, ago. he's catching, he's the one that's catching some flack around. Because he, because he, he uh, said, listen. He, he raced qualified kids. and He didn't even race qualified kids. He uh, family qualified kids. He said, if I'm looking for an offensive lineman, I want a smart kid from a two-parent family. No, he race baited to the race baiters when he said his defensive lineman, he wants him hungry. He did. Coming from Section 8 apartments with one single mama. I mean, I understand that the probably the primary uh, primary audience in those Section 8 housing is probably predom- predominantly black. Probably. But sure. it is not exclusive. There are plenty no. of poor white kids in the trailer parks that have a single mama and are just hanging on to the edge of the earth. But he would also take a T.J. Watt family. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, 100%. but what he said, and, and I don't understand. You have, when you're doing this and you're recruiting from all across the globe, you have to have a set of criteria. I'm sorry if that criteria hurts your feelings, but you got to know where to look. It makes it easier to find what you're looking for. I, I befriended a black gentleman on vacation. Real nice guy. We sat and talked for about an hour, an hour and a half one day, and we talked about life. T. T. Super yeah, cool tea. dude. He's a chef. Yep, we talked about things. He was in the army, and he said today's kids are fucking soft. And he said, "Include my son." Right. He said they're soft. Yeah. Play video games. They don't want to do shit. They don't want to work. They don't have no respect for nobody. They feel like they're privileged. Mm-hmm. You know, he's not going to get he's not going to get his feelings hurt over Deion Sanders saying that because what Deion Sanders says was the truth. Yeah. But we got too many people that try to make a. Uh, try to make everything about race instead of just what it is. We're all people, you know, and we have all the same problems. We all have a bunch of lazy, uh, lazy fucking kids right now. And the whole world is that way. Um, did you see the Lamar Jackson deal? Yes. He, 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 he they, they, they franchised him, but you can give them two first round picks and make an offer. And they've got to yeah. match that offer. You can and then it, these, pe- these people are just mad about this. And I saw Robert Griffin, the third RG three is all worked up. I'm like, I even put on his Twitter, go well, buy your fucking team and pay him what you want. I don't understand that. It's not about color. Our, uh, Lamar Jackson has missed 10 games the last two years. The last two five games. He didn't play in the playoffs. They almost won a playoff game. If the guy don't fumble, they beat Cincinnati with a black backup Huntley. quarterback. Huntley. Who's not very good. I agree with him on that. But Lamar Jackson has done nothing. He's won one playoff game, I think. He won an MVP one year, and that's it. He hasn't done nothing in the last two years, but you want to give him two hundred and fifty million dollars? Maybe that's how these guys become billionaires and own these teams by not being fucking stupid with their money. I would not try. I I have said and said and said Lamar Jackson is an exciting quarterback. He is going to win you some games. He will not win you a Super Bowl. If the end result is to win a Super Bowl, why would and he can't do it? And the owners don't think he did. Why would you want to pay two hundred and fifty million dollars and tie yourself down to that guy? Right. I wouldn't. And RG3, if RG3 is the one that can't figure this out, maybe RG3 could, should rewatch a little bit of his career because I think RG3 was the warning shot to all the franchises. I, very good point. I had not thought about that, but that is that exactly if, right. If you're afraid, if you're already kind of on the fence of, a, of this style quarterback that can make you pay with his legs, and I'll admit he's a flashy fucking quarterback, but maybe RG3 should go rewatch the last year of his career because that is what these 
executives are afraid of. He's going to lose his knees, and that's going to be the end of it. Who's won more playoff games, Brock Purdy or Lamar Jackson? <laughs> Brock Purdy. That's right. <clears throat> Brock Purdy can come back from his elbow being done, which they said he should be able to find. I would much rather have Brock Purdy as my quarterback than Lamar Jackson. Right. Because I think the, the, the future is better with Brock Purdy. Now, I love Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson's done now. Russell uh, Wilson, uh, he's done. He'll never come back from probably this. Probably so. He's, I think Russell finished. Wilson got too big for himself. He and did. I think that he had a new head coach, and I knew. I think Russell Wilson knew that he could play the system and maybe get a little bit big for his britches. Sean Payton is coming in. Sean Payton is a, a very – he's one of the best head coaches in the league. That's what everybody keeps telling me. Um, so I, I, think so. I think if he can rain and kind of pop the bubble that is Russell Wilson – he might salvage something. Now, if he doesn't get anything out of him this year, I would agree with you that he is done. Sean Payton has got three years, and they're going to fire his ass in Denver. Well, you got to have a quarterback. Well, that's right. He and had a quarterback in Drew Brees. And the greatest quarterback to maybe play the game ever outside of Tom Brady, and he's going to very push that deal, is Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. The black quarterback there. So was the NFL racist for having <clears throat> him in? No, what do you, most of the what quarterbacks do you, what are do you mean? Player. What do you mean? Oh, this is just no, all no, RG3. no. no, no. What do you mean with Sean in regards to Sean Payton? I just don't think Sean Payton is it. I don't think he didn't he didn't do shit in New Orleans his last couple of years there. I just He didn't have a quarterback. Drew Brees was on his fucking ass on the tail end of his career. Well, but so now you, Hill. So now you've got another one that's on the end of his career. Possibly. Poss I'm not I'm not I mean, I'm not saying he might be the savior, but Den I think Sean, Denver's I think a, Sean Payton's a good coach. Denver is a quarterback away from being a Super Bowl contender. They don't have it now. That's a big fucking piece though. That's, that's the, the like, biggest piece. That's not like saying I'm a, and, I'm a right guard. Okay, that's right. And what does nobody want to sign? Nobody wants to sign Lamar Jackson because he's not that piece. No. But the, they people just can't get over that. He is a PlayStation quarterback. Yeah. He is a perfect that. He's good. He's going to win you 10 to 12 games every year, yep. but he's not going to win the playoffs. Would you rather have Joe Burrow? Fuck yeah. Okay. Would you rather have Patrick Mahomes? Yes. Would you rather have, you already said Brock Purdy. Would you rather have Kyler Murray? That no, might, that might be where I draw the line. Kyler Murray is another one they've wasted all that money in. He's never going to get nothing of it. He's a short version of Lamar Jackson. Now, I'm not a Deshaun <clears throat> okay, Watson but would, fan, would you but I think have... Deshaun Watson is better long yes. term yeah, than Lamar he's a, Jackson. He's a pocket passer. That's right, and that's what it takes to win in the NFL. But how did Daniel Jones get a deal that Lamar Jackson did? That's what it's everybody. No, say, they, it's similar numbers. They're both Daniel Jones can make you pay with his legs because Daniel Jones signed a four year. Hundred and sixty million dollar contract. Lamar Jackson turned down five years, two hundred and fifty million. That's well. The problem. There's your number. Deshaun right there. Wa Lamar Jackson wants Deshaun Watson money. Cleveland was stupid to give Deshaun Watson that kind of money. That one owner fucked that all up. Right. The other owners ain't that stupid. Deshaun Watson is a better quarterback than Lamar Jackson long term. And now Lamar Jackson wants similar numbers. Yep. So he's not wanting Danny Dimes numbers. No, he's wanting, four years. He's wanting Deshaun Watson money. So he I, wants fifty million a year in re, instead of forty. I don't. I'm not a big Shannon Sharp guy. I think Shannon's funny as shit. I really do, but he gets a little too racist for me on his shit. But I like him as a. To, to, I think he'd be funny to sit and listen to on sometimes because he'd be fun to argue with about shit. But he said it today. He said Lamar Jackson wants a signing bonus of what his probably his worth. He just wants that in a right. signing bonus. He wants a hundred fifty million dollars signing bonus. So Shannon is on he sees why nobody's signing. Shannon signed. understands why nobody is signing. Not not saying that he don't think he should get a big contract, but he understands. First of all, an NFL contracts like anything else at, those contracts are for what you can give them in the future. It's not what you've done in the past. Your past is your past. Right. Yeah, you like Tom Brady. Tom Brady's past, he's worth a hundred million dollars a year. Tom Brady's future, he's not worth ten million a year. Right. I, I, if Tom Brady was a free agent right now, I don't think anybody would pay him thirty million a year. You don't think Denver would? Not thirty million a year, no. Huh? But it wouldn't even come down to money with him. I don't think nobody would sign him. I think he's done. Career wise, I think he's just finished. He's an old man and he's done, just like a lot of people are. It's going to be wild if Rodgers does go to the Jets. I and, think it's ninety percent happens. And that Favre and Rodgers career started and ended. Well, Favre went to the Vikings, of course. But the next place after the Packers was the Jets. So are you going to be sad when Jimmy Garoppolo signs with the Packers? Uh, it'll be all right. <clears throat> I just hope that they do something other than Jordan Love because I, I don't think that's the answer. But. I don't think Jordan Love will be on their team. 
And I mean, the Jets you've got, they weren't bad last year. No, they were a quarterback away from being really good. Mike White came in was actually pretty good. But That's a guy got, right uh, there that I would try to sign if Aaron Rodgers goes with the Jets. Yes. Mike White would be an improvement at Baltimore. Yeah. He would be an improvement for the Redskins big time. Yeah, because they just cut Wentz. Yeah, Wentz is done. He said he's going to continue Indianapolis, playing. he would be good at Indy. Mike White's a good football player, a really good football player. I thought Indy just signed somebody. It's a retread, but. That's all they do. I could have swore. Now, I think in the NFL, I'm going to go ahead and call this right now. If you're an NFL team Uh-oh. and you're a quarterback and you're drafting a quarterback, the best quarterback to get is a kid from Ohio State. C.J. Stroud. Stroud? Is by far the best quarterback in the draft, I think. Huh. I think he's been the best the last two years in football. I think if you're taking a kid, I would not draft a quarterback in the top ten. I would not. I think you're wasting your time. Trade back. I would trade back in a heartbeat. The Chicago Bears have the trade. They have it all worked out if they're smart. They would trade that number one pick for number three, then trade the number three for number five and still get who they want. Your boy from Texas Tech is going to be a top ten pick probably. Which one? Defensive they had seven. end. They had oh. a defensive end. Oh. They yeah, think he he's good. They say he's a top ten pick. Uh, but I would uh, – Was I think, Mahomes a top ten pick? Uh, yeah, I, I think he was, he was number 10 or 12. Uh, he might have been 12. I think he was 12. I know they traded up to get him. Um, Mahomes draft pick. I feel bad for that kid. Tenth. Tenth. Has there, has there ever been another top ten pick from Texas Tech? Yes. Uh, they had a guy that was taken first. What was Crabtree? E.G. Holub was a first pick. Oh. Back in the day. I think uh, I think Crabtree was like number five or seven. Uh, I know somebody that'll know. Now they're wanting Dallas. I've been seeing to to try to uh, D Hop. Yep, D Hop. He was also tenth. Tenth. Yep. And um, I think D Hop's got some years left in him, but I don't think he's the big threat. Uh, I don't know. Never had a top ten. There we go. Yeah, EJ Holub. I want to know how many. Because I don't, I don't trust you. Go, go down a bit. Uh, go down. EJ Holub. Number one. Number six. Oh, pick six. Okay, I thought he was number Roger one. Roger Gill was number two. I don't know who that is. I don't know who went to the Chargers. Uh, oh, 1940. <clears throat> oh, round 11. Never Holy mind. shit. Well, that, that's way too far back. Oh, that's the American Football League. National Football League, uh, number two. Look at E.J. Holub and see what he was then. Well, I don't think. Oh, 61. Yep. Go down, go down, go down. 1961. E.J. Holub was number three. Second round, though. Oh. Here's one and one, Dave Parks. Yes. Great football player, too. Another one. Donnie Anderson was really good, but he was a seven, the number seven overall pick. Mm, so I think that's it. Yep. One twenty one, Gabriel Rivera. Yeah, he got in a car wreck and got paralyzed. Uh one of ten. Oh, that's Crabtree. What was Zach Thomas? Zach Thomas was like a, a five of five, twelve. He was five twenty two down there. What about Wes Welker? Way down there. I don't even think Wes Welker was a free agent. I think he was a he was a walk on, wasn't he? Yes, or so. yeah. Uh invite. You think Wes Welker gets in the Hall of Fame? He shouldn't, no. One twenty seven, Jordan Brooks. You don't think so? No. Some good numbers. No. He was a, he was a, I, no, he was a position guy. He piggybacked off of Brady. He still caught the ball. Yeah, listen, fucking, he's a workout holic. I'm not taking anything away from the guy. He had a very good career. Let's see but what his he, stats were. <clears throat> he should not be in the Hall of Fame. No way. Um, yeah, I mean, you talk about fucking grit and everything. Else. Like, if, 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 if teams were, if teams had two or three Wes Walkers on them, I mean, just fucking did not take no for an answer ever. Five nine one eighty five, nine hundred catches for ninety nine hundred yards. Yeah, no. What's it? he's got no. better numbers than a lot of guys are in the Hall of Fame. Drew Pearson, one of them who yeah, just got in. But that's that's a different time. That, How many that times part did Tom Brady to... throw the ball that year? Well, I mean, what he, is he uh, played on? He played when Tom Brady was at the. What's other white boy that played for New England? The receiver. Uh, Amendola see or what, Julian no, Edelman? Julian, see what Edelman's numbers are. So we're at 900 for 910,000 yards, basically. Okay. I don't think Edelman. Yeah. See, not even close. Not even close. Okay. Look at Antonio Brown. 
I don't think Antonio Brown deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. He didn't have the career. I mean, <clears throat> if you're talking about that, similar. He had more yards. A lot more yards. And, and he, 30 more touchdowns. He'll be in the Hall of Fame. Really? Even with all the off field antics. Shouldn't have nothing to do with off field. Same as Pete Rose. Yeah, but I don't I don't I don't I don't twelve seasons and I mean he he had three year four in there where he was dominant. And then like the last couple of that twelve year career, I mean that's ta- that's including his time at the Bucks, which was didn't really do anything. Did he have two years? Yeah, he had two he had years. About at the five Bucks. years with the Steelers that he was unbelievable. Right. Okay, look at Randy Moss's stats. Uh, Randy Moss is in the hall, isn't he? Uh, yes. <clears throat> I'll tell you what, look at Marvin Harrison. He's in the Hall of Fame. Uh, he's senior, right? Mm-hmm. 11 for 14. 11. That's not right. 1,100, 14,000. Yeah, that is right. 1,100 catches for 14,000 yards. So he's got 200 more catches and... 4,000 more yards. Yeah. And a bunch more touchdowns. Yeah, he's got almost... Over double. Now look at Drew Pearson's stats. Well, it's also a different time. I understand too, that, but if we're going to go by stats. Well, I mean, I don't think you're going to go by stats. Totally. Pearson. Oh, they're going to make me dig. Nope. 500, 500 catches for 7,800 yards. Oh, yeah, there it is. Games played one fifty six. A lot different. A lot of different. Look at Michael Irvin's stats. Just go to the right. You can click right on Michael Irvin. Uh, seven fifty eleven twelve hundred basically. He had what? Seven hundred fifty receptions for twelve hundred yards. So see there, it's just. I mean, it's just crazy. That's it's, and that was a different game even too. And he's fucking all decade for the nineties. He was a fucking stud. I just I think Wes Welker one of them one of them guys is going to get in the Hall of Fame. I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't put him in. Great guy. Kids should look up to him. His work ethic was second to none. If you're going to all time wide receiver catches. And uh, let's see who's not the first one that's not in the Hall of Fame. All time. Yards. Yep. Or catches even. Jerry Rice. Okay. T.O. just got in. Randy Moss, Isaac Bruce, Tony Gonzalez, Tim Brown, Steve Smith. He's not eligible yet, is he? Or is he in? Is Steve Smith? I don't. I think he just got in. He had a thousand catches. Reggie Wayne. Reggie Wayne was. Well, that's one I was thinking of earlier. What is he at? Right. He was at a thousand catches for fourteen thousand yards, and he got to the play with Peyton Manning. But he had a thousand, just almost the same catches, but he had a lot more yards. Andre Johnson. Okay, that's one I think that's going to be close. What's he at? About Reggie Wayne numbers. Yep. James Lofton's in. He had 764 yards. Chris, Chris Carter's, Carter's in. in. Anquan Bolden is not in yet. He's going to be close. Henry Ellard, that was back in the day. Julio Jones is going to be in. But Julio Jones has less catches than Wes Welker did. Right. Now, there's nobody's going to say Wes Welker's a better receiver than Julio Jones. But, but Julio's got more yards. Mm-hmm. About 4,000 more yards. Plus, that's apples and oranges, too, because how many times did Julio Jones catch a double team? Did Wes Walker ever catch a double team outside of high school? I'm not I'm not disagreeing one yet. I'm just curious. Okay, Heinz Ward, what was he at? I saw his stat. He was down. He's on the bottom, 27, the number 27. Heinz Ward had 1,000 catches for 12,000 yards, so there's not much difference between them. And I think Heinz Ward is going to be in or should be pretty close. But uh, I was just curious about that. I know that uh, – if we if he plays two or three more years, uh, Travis Kelsey is going to be up on a lot of them list. He'll go in. Oh, he's going to go in because he's probably the greatest tight end tight that ever played the game. Yeah, there's Kelsey. 814 catches, 10,000 yards. He'll have another 300 catches before he's done, and he'll be at about 15,000 yards. Two greatest tight ends ever played, both played for the Chiefs. Yeah. Well, Gronk, you're forgetting about him. I don't. Yeah, he was great. There's no doubt about that. I just don't know if I don't put him up there with Kelsey. You said two of the greatest. You're putting Tony Gonzalez. You're putting Gronk below Tony Gonzalez? Probably so. <laughs> Different game. Tony Gonzalez would have played. I mean, that's my personal deal. Gronk was good, but he just hurt so much at the end. What he are was? his stats, anyways? I didn't see him on none of them list. No. I don't think he had the career. Longevity. Is he going to get in? 
He will just because he changed the game. <clears throat> Made tight end cool again. A. Oh, that's for the season. 800. And, that's for no, the season. No, not. Um, There it is. 621 for 9286. But 92 touchdowns is what's big for him. Two. I don't know if I don't know if he gets he, he surely will get in, but he might not. He will. He's he not was a first a, ballot guy. He was an icon. He'll get in. Change the game. Change the game. Might have ridden Tony Gonzalez's coattail. What happens? The game. What happens if Aaron Hernandez don't get in trouble there? Ooh. <laughs> Aaron Hernandez was damn good too. Yeah. <clears throat> that whole double tight end set. I don't know. I remember I took Aaron Hernandez before Gronk in a fantasy football draft, and I was like, who the fuck is Rob Gronkowski, and why is he scoring four touchdowns in this game? I've got Aaron Hernandez. Do you think... Go uh, with the murderer. Would you be surprised if Bill Belichick traded for uh, Lamar Jackson? Yes. Fuck yeah. He doesn't fit that. Bill Belichick wouldn't know what to do with Lamar Jackson. What about if he went to... He does not fit the mold. What about Miami? Miami. Uh no, I think Mike I think Mike McDaniels was like a new toy. Because I don't know if two is ever gonna play again. I could see Lamar Jackson going there and with Tyreek Hill. I think Mike McDaniels would like that new little gadget thing. I, I think just, it would fit him well. I just don't think Lamar Jackson's a good enough passer. Lamar Jackson's gonna have to realize that what the market is, people don't want to take a shot on this. They just don't. I wouldn't want to. No. Knowing that I mean, granted, everybody's one hit away from Having a totally different career, but he is even more at risk for this. If, if Tom Brady did blew out at ACL one year, yep, but he come back because he didn't rely on his legs to win games. No, but Lamar Jackson does. Mm -hmm. Kyler Murray the same way. Kyler Murray the first two years he's in the NFL, I had him in fantasy. He was great. Yeah, he's been horrible lately. He don't run no more because he can't run the ball no more. You want a quarterback that's mobile, and, and Josh Allen is a big guy that runs the ball, but Josh Allen is also a very good quarterback. If Josh Allen lost a step because he got hurt his leg or something, he'd still be a great quarterback because he's big and can throw the ball. Right. Um, Danny Dimes, I, I'm assuming that Brian Dayball really likes him. And Brian Dayball has done a good job of coaching him up. Yeah. And they did it with absolutely no wide receivers. The Giants get a couple wide receivers. They're going to be a really good football team. Yeah. But the the thing that everybody thinks about is every one of these teams that was in the Super Bowl, the playoffs, all of them had good defenses. The Chiefs' defense was really good at the end of the year. Right. And that's what wins football games. You got to have a quarterback, there's no doubt. But you also got to have a good defense. Yep. Um, so the CIA just recently declassified this is what this video is. The CIA recently declassified a book written in 1966 from a well known engineer. Um, it, this, he gives his theory on what's going to happen when the polls reverse. I thought they were doing that now. This guy says it happens in a day. It's not gradual. Huh? Yeah. So the, the poles are going to shift 1,000 miles just in a day. And it's going to be a day. Um, the CIA took his book off the shelves through the Freedom of Information Act. Uh, it's how everybody's finally finding out. But it's basically the Adam and it, they call it the Adam and Eve story. Why do um, they take it off the books? Why is that bad for us to know <clears throat> the truth? Because they don't want people to freak. This was in 1966. They don't want people to freak out. Plus, he calls it the Adam and Eve story, and I'm, you know, I think that, um, that was probably you. You couldn't go. You couldn't. There couldn't be any other explanation. Um, the CIA only released 57 pages of the original 284 page manuscript, and those pages have been, in CIA words, sanitized. So this. I just started reading about this uh, before we started, and I found this video, but it'll talk a little bit about it, I think, right here. So basically what's going to – I don't even think we have to play it. I think I know enough about it. That's where I can butcher it. But basically the polls, everything's going to shift all at once, but the wind and the ocean are going to continue because of the momentum. So it's going to carry wind and water – just it's just gonna fucking woof, and it's all gonna be gone. So we're gonna have a huge tide, uh, yeah, like thousands of miles high. Hmm. Here I can play it because I know where. The, so what do you think the chances of this happening are? 
And what makes this guy? This is just guys. Well, it's not like any earthquake in history. In California, mountains shake like ferns in a breeze. A mighty Pacific rears back and piles up into a mountain of seawater more than two miles high. Wow. Then starts its race eastward. The wind attacks, shredding everything in supersonic bombardment. The mountain of Pacific seawater follows the wind eastward, burying Los Angeles and San Francisco as if they were but grains of sand. Across the continent, the thousand mile per hour wind wreaks unholy vengeance everywhere, mercilessly. Now here's why there's such violent wind. The Earth spins about a thousand miles per hour. We don't feel this because everything is spinning together. The land, the water, the atmosphere. But Thomas says that when the pole shift happens, the Earth's air and water continue to spin, but the land masses stop. In many places, the Earth's molten sublayer breaks through and spreads a sea of white hot liquid fire. In a fraction of a day, all vestiges of civilization are gone. And the great cities, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Chicago, Dallas, New York, Boston, are nothing but legends. Barely a stone is left where millions walked just a few hours ago. Now think of what would happen if you were in a car going a thousand miles per hour that suddenly stopped. Now think if of what anywhere. would happen if a large city going a thousand miles per hour suddenly stopped. Skyscrapers would collapse. Millions of people would be thrown around like they were in a food processor. Very few people would survive that. But survivors are the unlucky ones. Because oh, moving across the country at the speed of sound is a two mile high wall of water, mud and debris. South America finds the Andes not high enough to stop the violence. In less than a day, the entire continent is burned by molten earth fire, buried under miles of violent seas, then turned into a frozen hell. Everything freezes, man, beast, plant, and mud in less than four hours. When the shift happens, the land on Earth stops moving, so the sun stops moving in the sky. That means one side of the Earth is going to get really hot, and the other side really cold. A temperature drop of 180 degrees. That means even the warmest parts of the planet are going to be 80 degrees below zero. Everything is frozen solid within four hours. Europe cannot escape. The Alps, Pyrenees, Urals are shunken, then heaved even higher when the wall of seawater strikes. Western Africa and Try to scoot well, forward. that it's happened before and will happen again very soon. Thomas paints a terrifying future. New Stone Age. We join Noah, Adam and Eve, Atlantis, Mew and Olympus, and Jesus joins Osiris, Taora, Zeus, and Vishnu. In the first chapter of his book, Dr. Thomas paints a terrifying future. But how likely is it? In the next few chapters, Thomas goes on to not only prove his pole shift is possible, that it's happened before and will happen again very soon. In fact, there are signs that it may have already begun. So basically what he's and, and what he's saying is, is that um, the last <clears throat> this guy, of course, him talking, not me. The last one happened. What the fuck is that sound? The last one happened. Uh, Remember, we were ta I've told you a couple times about the uh, Younger Dryas impact theory, or in, you know that whole civilization. It was about twelve thousand years ago, so we're getting close. <clears throat> well, not just that, but like there was that uh, there was that advanced civilization called Gobekli Tepe, and um, I did not know this. The second, the world's I think second biggest pyramids in Mexico. I had no idea. Um, Chichen Itza. I think so, but it's it's. Uh, the, the, I think a lot of it is underground, but we were obviously very advanced a long time ago and something happened right around the 12,000 year mark that changed the entire landscape. And if this engineer's theory is right, the poles probably just reversed and, well, it, and it happened in an instant and it fucked everything up. Well, I'm going to tell you right now. It take was, me. I hope I'm in California. Oh, I'm gone. I'll take me right off the bat. You know, um, <clears throat> we just got back from Mexico and we did some we did some snorkeling. <clears throat> and I've never in my life felt so irrelevant. Choo. We we snorkel. You know how deep that water was? A couple hundred feet. No. Five hundred feet. No. Sixteen hundred feet. I read it up on oh, it. It's five hundred and fifty meters. Oh. Well, that's different. Yeah, it's sixteen hundred feet right there. It's a long way down. Um, but we were we were we snorkeled. And I was touching starfish, so I could go down so twelve to fifteen foot. And you, I could, you weren't supposed to touch the starfish. Well, That's I, illegal. I, I wanted to touch them. So, anyways, it was twelve to fifteen feet. 
Anyways, and we went to some other, to the wall, they called it, and we the snorkeled. Wall. Go to and the it was wall. 50 to 60 feet. And then all of a sudden, go to the wall. You couldn't see shit. Not a fucking thing. It was the abyss. 1,600 feet right. right through there. Air, or not air, light just disappears. Like, you can see the rays of sun coming through the water, and then it just, to nothing. Yep. 1,600 feet is how deep that water is. I if you not- want to feel tiny... Do that. Yes, because, boy, I did. Because <clears throat> Jesse's like, well, what if a shark comes up? Well, ain't shit you can do about it. Nothing. We had a friend of ours who lost his wife down there on a night dive one time. And yeah. now I could understand why. You see a light go by and that's the end of it. I don't know if it would be better to have it be a night dive. I don't know. I, w- I would not want to night dive. No, but, no, 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 no. I mean, like, if you're going to watch your wife get drug away. I'd like to know what drug her. You do? Well, I would, yeah. Was it an octopus, a squid, or a shark, or a whale? I don't know. But anyways... Listen to this now. Also, I did not realize how deep the Gulf of Mexico is. Was I, once I start reading on stuff, I read more and more of it. The average depth in the Gulf of Mexico is like fifty two hundred feet. I always think of it as real shallow. There's a place in the in the Gulf of Mexico, north of the Yucatan, and I'm wondering if this is not where the big meteor hit that they thought that wiped out civilization. Wiped out the dinosaurs. It's twelve thousand oh, foot deep. Dinosaurs. Twelve thousand foot deep. Huh. I'm trying to find more on this. Tom Chan Thomas was the guy that wrote this book that um, the CIA took away. Chan Thomas is the state's going to be happy because after this podcast, there's going to be a thousand of them bought in the next couple of days. So I'm going to go buy one for sure. <clears throat> but I don't know. I mean, can you only get 54 pages of this fucking thing? I don't know. But see, that's what I don't understand is, first of all, <laughs> this is just this guy's opinion. Right. More than anything. But I don't understand why our government... Keeps wanting it's it's just like this J six shit. Let people make their own fucking decisions. But their deal is is they're trying to cover their ass because they're stealing from us for years. This guy here just wrote a book on his what he thinks happened. I don't even think you have to buy it. I think you can just go to the CIA.gov and whatever is declassified is up. Is there. But why do you like me, I'm not gonna change my life at all over this pole shift. Are you? No. How could you prepare for this anyways? What are you gonna do for it? What are I mean, you going to do for it? Do you want the extreme heat or the extreme cold? I want to die. I want to die in uh, fast. So whatever's quickest. I think I think they're, if you drop 180 degrees in a couple minutes. Think you get cold? <sighs> Boy, but Can you imagine Mexico? Know. We'd have been awful cold with no coats. I don't want to get hot either, though. I don't know I what think. you want to do. I want to go fast. I hope, I, I'm, I hope for some reason I'm in California and that wave of water hits me. I'm the first one to go. And... You know, what's funny is, is on this video, it shows a guy trying to get away in a horse. What the fuck do you think you're going to do? <laughs> Take me away. But, and like he, he had talked about um, how uh, continents drift and they've done it like four. I thought that there was only like one big continental shift. Evidently, there's been four or five or six. The only people that are going to survive this thing is the people living in the, um, around uh, Mount Everest. Because it's tall enough? 30,000 feet. 34,000 feet. Some of them upper deals, 20,000 feet. That would be that would be my guess of where the only people that would survive would be. But what a world to live in. It's kind of like surviving if we had a nuclear holocaust. You know, fucking take me out in the first one. I don't want to s- survive through that shit. And they say we're getting closer and closer to that. Well, every day we are. Every day we're getting closer to the end of the world. You Do you think, think that there will be a, a, a nuclear? No. You don't think so? No, I don't think nobody's got the balls to do it. I don't think so either. I think, you know, Putin backed out of the, what was it, that basically a peace pact? He does not want to, to end the there's world. No, there's no scenario where he walks out alive if he drops a nuke. Nobody does. None. There's no, And there's no reason to that. Well, no, I mean, like, I'm assuming the president would probably go to a bunker. That dumb motherfucker don't even know who he is anyway, so it wouldn't matter. But yeah, the, the up and mighty, but you know what would be really, then people don't realize, there ain't nobody to serve their ass anymore. Right. You come out of that bunker and you're going to be on your fucking own. You think Nancy Pelosi, somebody's going to be fucking giving her martinis and shit? Nope. Yeah. Not at all. That's a whole nother thing. Like, everybody was was certain that this uh, Paul Pelosi video was going to shed new light. and well, She's just disappeared now. Didn't do anything. Nope, she's disappeared now. They are starting to catch a lot of shit, the politicians, and they should be from people. We've let them, we've let them control our lives and them live like kings and send our kids to war and everything else. So CIA.gov, it's got the whole, this is called the Adam and Eve story. It's fucking terrifying if this thing, like Jeff said, this is just this guy's opinion. He's an engineer, so I'm assuming he's done quite a bit of work. I just found the thing. 
So I might try to read it tonight, but it does not give a very, uh, a very, very good picture. Back to my advice I give people all the time, go live your life. Do what you want to do. Life the end's too coming. short. The great floods. Yeah, there's going to be floods like no other. But every, that's what's cool is every civilization has their own take of a flood narrative. And they all emerge about the same time. So that would mean to me that there was probably a flood. I would probably say you're right. What did King Charles do? I just saw that. No, he did something with his kid. Who gives a shit? Meghan Markle? I'm assuming one day the people in England are going to get sick, tired of all their blue blood bullshit and fucking overthrow his ass. Except paying him money. Who are they going to fulfill that? Who are they going to fill the position? Instead of funding him. That's the only thing is I wouldn't fund his ass. They, they've got it. I don't know how much money they get it fifty to hundred million dollars a year. The government gives them. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, Oliver, off season mode, aren't you, bud? Yep, he's ready. He's like, I'm ready to go home, Judge. All right, let's get out of here. God bless All y'all. Right. Thank y'all for listening. We've got Bucky Nail and uh, Wade Montgomery. Um, and then I got Zach Sears. <laughs> We're going to talk about marijuana and Missouri. And the growing and the selling and all that good stuff that goes with that. And uh, next week we'll have some. We'll have three shows next week. Take it as it comes. The but, Mexico trip kind of fucked us because then we got sick and. Anyway. Ooh, we got some Montezuma's revenge. That motherfucker got his revenge last night. Mother, father, tough sickness. Pain of the pain of the toilet bowl. Oh, right? constant just, sitting in there. Just gotcha. Could you imagine if it would have hit twelve hours airplane? sooner? Oh, we were lucky. We got home when we got sick. Ooh. One of the one lady with us got sick while we were down there, and I thought she just drank something or ate something bad. And then, because we'd been out on a boat when she got sick, and then well, everything was fine. I was at the office yesterday, and bam, felt a little rumble. It hit me. Oh, it was bad. And then mom got rumble in the jungle. Mom didn't feel bad. Oh, mom's on a podcast this week. Is she? Um, make me. I can't remember the name Ooh. of the dang thing. Hunting wives podcast. There Hunters go. wives. Po- Hunting wives podcast. Michelle Stanfield. Check it out. Check it out. All right. Thank y'all for listening to us. God bless y'all. Have a great week. Check out our sponsors. Uh, go get involved in Ducks Unlimited, Double T British Kennels, Ducks uh, Dirty Duck Coffee, Stanfield Hunting Outfitters, Bangtail Whiskey, Alpha Outdoor Specialties, The Hump Proof App, Looking Glass Podcast, Lucky Duck, Shin Gear Waiters, Not Just a Waiter Company, Gun Dog Outdoors, Pacific Calls, Dive Bomb Industries, Boss Shot Shells, and Mod Players. 